Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I want to show you a new brand of glitter gel pens. I have to thank Donna from Coloring with Donna about uh, introducing these glitter gel pens to me. Anybody that knows me by now knows I love my glitter gel pens. She was sent these Chromatech glitter gel pens as Happy Meal to her, and they are just awesome. I think I have found a new favorite in the glitter gel pens. Um, let me show you them. This is a set of 50. The set does come with a set of refills, and I did purchase a separate set of refills because you can order just the refills themselves. I also have, because they come in a smaller set too, they also come in a set of 30. And they also come with a set of refills and you can purchase the refills separately. So let's take a look at the 50 set. Let me stack these over here. The thing that is so awesome about these gel pens is the fact that, can you see that? There is a number code on the barrel of the pen. It says Chromatech, and then it gives a code for this particular color. This one is G08. If you also notice inside on the ink cartridge itself, and let's go ahead and open this, because this is what the refills look like too. Can you see that? It is written in gold on the barrel, so it is not just clear like most of the other refills are that you get with your sets, like my color technique that I really like. It's impossible to read what the name is of the refill, so it's really hard to match them up. However, these you can see very clearly, and I just love that. Now, Donna had pointed out a very interesting observation of hers. When she was swatching out all of her gel pens, she noticed something. Some of these colors and the way these pens are laid out very, very closely resembles the Color It gel pens. If any of you have the Color It glitter gel pens, go ahead and if you do get these, go and do a comparison. I did a comparison of many of the colors in the Color It glitter gel pen set, and they do match many of them that are in here. This is a bigger variety of the glitter gel pens than what Color It has. Plus, these are quite a bit cheaper than Color It. Uh, yes, Color It does come in awesome pencil cases, or in this case, gel pen cases. They have really nice cases to keep their gel pens in. But if that's not important to you and price is more important, plus, like I said, you get a bigger variety in this Chromatech pack than you get with the Color It gel pens. So, with that being said, oh, I was going to also show you this. You get this really pretty, can you see how iridescent it is? With each pack, you get this pretty picture, too. I thought that was really pretty. Um, what I thought we would do then is tie in both the introduction of these glitter gel pens along with doing a color and chat in this mandala book by Jade Summer. This is volume one, Mandalas for Beginners. And this is in uh, 
what what I'm just I'm at a loss for words here. This is for <laughs> the month of March is called Mandal Mandala Mania 2019. And this is the brainchild of Michelle from Color Chats and Cats with Michelle. And it is co-hosted by Anne of A Colorful Life and also by Samantha Oswald. So I thought, what better way to show these awesome glitter gel pens than to color in a mandala for uh, Mandala Mania 2019. We're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. <laughs> so I thought we could color a rather simple mandala together here. And so I picked out this one. And I'm not quite sure what colors I am. Let me get a scrap piece of paper here so I can kind of scribble out. Uh, let's go with my favorite, which is purple. And let's see what that looks like. That's pretty. How about one of my kind of favorite four color combos? Because as you can see, there are four things here. So I'm going to go with a four color a combo for this particular picture and so I thought well maybe purple and pink because that's my favorite colors together and then we'll throw in a blue and a green so we got the purple let's pick out a pretty pink and yep yeah, them two look good together I'm just scribbling on a sheet of paper over here off to the side then let's pick out a blue, and I think, yeah, they're all on this side. Pull out a pretty blue. Let's see what that one looks like. I don't want one quite that dark because then it kind of looks too similar to the purple. So let's go a little lighter. There, that's better. And then let's pick out a pretty green. I think I want to go with a lighter green. Let's open this side. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> um, let's try this one. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so these, put the scrap paper back over here. These are the four pens that I am going to color this mandala with. So let's get started. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Okay. Now, what should we color the middle with? Let's go with the pink. These color extremely smooth, just like the color it gel pens do. I mean, they are just awesome. You can see how easy that was to lay down that color. Then let's go ahead with the purple. Hopefully, I will get done with this color and chat in one session because this is not too detailed of a mandala. How is everyone doing today? It is Friday when I'm recording this. And I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be getting this uploaded to YouTube, but it will be sometime in the near future. Okay, let's, let's see, what should we do with these four? Let's go with green on the inside. Now, because this is a simpler mandala, markers probably would have worked better on this particular picture, but we are going to use gel pens. 
just because I wanted to do something easier that wasn't too involved so it wouldn't take me too long to complete this picture. I had recorded a video earlier today and that um, I uploaded already and that was showing the app that I use to keep track of my entire coloring book collection. If you've seen my seven part mini series, <laughs> it showed my entire coloring book collection. So you could see that I have a rather extensive collection. And so I wanted something to keep track of my books so that it would prevent me from buying duplicates because that was periodically happening. <laughs> Not a lot, but it, it did happen here and there. And plus, I just wanted it all in one place. I didn't want to have to keep things written down. And I wanted a search feature so that I could search by, say, author or book title. And I could find the book really easy. Plus... That way, you could immediately see, oh, yeah, I do already have that book. You know, you see somebody on color tube coloring out of a book, or they're showing a color book haul, and you really like something, and you don't quite remember if you already have that in your collection. And by using this app, it is extremely easy to see if you do in fact already have that book. I hope you can see well enough here if I'm zoomed in enough. So you can see how easy these pens lay down. I mean they are just awesome. I love them. Thank you so much, Donna. I had uh, left a comment for her um, that, oh, these look awesome, but I need more glitter gel pins. Like, I need a hole in the head. <laughs> and she answered back, there's no such thing as too many gel pins. And I'm like, you are very correct. <laughs> there is no such thing as too many gel pins. <laughs> So I caved and I thought I am going to have to try these because when she showed that they have coordinating color codes on the barrel of the pen as well as on the refill, that is the biggest problem I have with these sets of gel pens that I have now. They may... Like my color techniques, I just, I love those pins. They also color very smoothly. I don't know if they color quite as smoothly as these, but they're a very good pen. Along with Cali Art, I do love the Cali Art gel pens. And Tan Mitt, um, which are very similar to the Cali Arts, except Tanmit comes in a really nice hard plastic case. And I will have to get that out sometime and show it to you. Now that I discovered these, I have a couple sets that have never been opened of Cali Art gel pens and the Tanmit. So I may, because I have a lot in my supply already of those two, the 
packages that I have not even opened yet, I may include in a future giveaway. I can foresee myself using these an awful, awful lot. <laughs> because I do straight color with my glitter gel pens, especially in my mandala books and my pattern books, my designs, pretty, pretty much just with gel pens. Once in a while, I may use um, some markers or some of the fine liners, but for the most part, it is just with glitter gel pens. I don't use any other type of gel pens. I when I first started coloring with gel pens, I did have all the different kinds. That meaning, um, you know, the uh, pastels, the neons, the metallics, and then they have a few colors that are just like regular gel pens, like the black and the red. Those are your, your basic gel pens. But I found that the pastels and the neons, but especially the pastels, yes, they were extremely pretty. And I loved the colors in both those and the neons, but they were very scratchy. They did not color near as smoothly as these glitter gel pits did. And then the metallics, they did, they did color as smoothly as the glitter gel pens, but the only thing I didn't like about them, number one, they're not as vibrant as glitter gel pens because they are supposed to have a metallic look to them. So, yeah. Um, but number two, and I think this is the thing that I really didn't like about them is the fact that they're very opaque and when you would color with them they would cover up and go over the black lines of your drawing so it made it look kind of messy if you know what I mean and so I did not like that at all I mean, yes, with your, even these here glitter gel pens, you typically only go up to the black line, but you're bound to go over it a little bit. And with the metallics, that would show. And I did not like that. So I no longer color with anything other than the glitter gel pens. And I love these. The only time this gets to be a little hard to color with is when I color at night in my chair and the light is shining uh, above me. Okay, Lisa, come on. Um, the light I have up above me shines down on my page just right <laughs> so that I it it gl the glitter gel pen I don't know how to say this the glitter gel pen glistens on my page and it's kind of hard to see if I am coloring it and and getting all of the white space covered if that makes sense and so when I look at it the next morning yeah, there, there typically is a lot of white space that was left behind that I colored from the night before. So then I typically go back over it and try to fill in some of that white space that I, that I missed the night before. So yeah, that's the only downfall for me, anyhow, coloring with the glitter gel pens at night. 
during the day, it's just fine. And I am having some problems with this one. And I'm not sure why. The other couple that I did test, I absolutely loved. And as you could see, they have all colored really, really nice. So I'm not sure what's up with this one. Let me scribble on a sheet of paper over here and see if we can get it going. Sometimes if you tap the tip, too, that gets it going. Hmm. Or, like what I do, I just flick my wrist. Either that, or for now, until I fix this, which... I can do, if, if worse comes to worse, you know what I do, and this is not a very safe thing to do, but I will take a lighter and I will heat the tip, and then I will scribble, and if it doesn't work, I may heat it again after it cools off, and typically, if I can't get it going any other way, that will do it. <laughs> so, I guess we get to get out the refills, this one is called GN14, that code. Let's see what these refills look like. Oh, look at that. You can see all the codes. I just love it. Oh, I love it. So, there is G06. Sorry about this. Didn't think I'd have to pull out the refills. And we need GN14. 14. So there's G09. We need GN14. 14. 14, 14. There we go. Okay. Let me quick throw these back in the box. Good thing I had the refills over here. I like the box these come in too. It's nice and it's a nice and sturdy box so you can keep all the refills in. Okay, so let's, I'm going to put this other one to the side and I will get that going. Pull off the tip and let's get back to coloring. Oh yeah, much better. So, what was I saying when I was so rudely interrupted? Oh, I was just saying what gel pens I no longer use. Yeah, I only exclusively use the glitter gel pens. And I know many of you do too. Is there anybody that uses the other gel pens? The pastels, like I said, the pastels are such pretty colors, and I love pastel colors. I I think that's, in all the lines of colors, I think that the pastels are my favorite. You notice here, <laughs> there is something missing. Hmm, don't think I have a black pen here. Let me see. Whoops, sorry. I bumped you. And I have just a regular ballpoint pen, but don't need much. I'm just going to draw in so that it looks a little symmetrical. So that was a little boo-boo on Jade Summer's part. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, <laughs> wanted to color these in pink and then that purple, but maybe we'll put this as green then and tie in these four. Okay. Now, let's pull the pink. I 
I often got asked when I would post all my patterns and designs on Facebook, how many gel pens do you go through? Or how many gel pens did that picture take? And it's like, yeah, probably a couple, <laughs> a couple gel pens per picture. So yes, I go through a lot of gel pens. But when you do have the refills, it is much cheaper than having to buy a whole new set of pens. The one thing that I wish we could do, because we all have our favorite colors, right? So everybody is going to run out of one color or another sooner than the other ones. I am not a big fan of the color brown. Yes, I do work it into some of my color schemes, especially the yellow, orange, red color scheme. If I need four colors for one reason or another, I will put brown in that mix and it looks really good in that color scheme. I have also done um, greens and browns and I like how that looks too, but I typically like the bright colors. <laughs> As you can tell, now this may be a little odd of a color combo, but I thought, eh, let's go with it. Sometimes what I would do for color combinations when I would be coloring my patterns is number one, either putting my gel pens in a stack or something like that and just picking out four or however many, and whatever colors you came out with, that's what you colored with. Or my grandson likes to always pick out pictures for me to color out of some of my books. He'll just pull a few books off the shelf and he will go through and he will pick out a picture in each one of <laughs> the books for me to color. So sometimes I will have him go through my gel pen set, whichever set I am working with at that time. And I will have him pick out some colors for me. Sometimes they work really well. Sometimes, you know. But by the time you're done with the design or the mandala, it typically looks fine. It's just, it's a unique way of getting colors together that you normally wouldn't. So it's kind of neat. And if, it's, if it happens to be one that you ended up liking, I jot it down on a piece of paper in a notebook. Or if you're still having problems coming up with color schemes, look on Pinterest. <laughs> there are just tons and tons and tons of color schemes out there. Or if you are not on Pinterest, which I think 99% of us are for some reason or another, I get a lot of recipes off of Pinterest and lots of coloring things too. But if you are not on Pinterest, you can go to a website called design-seeds.com and these are color combos that you will find all over Pinterest too. They take them from designseeds.com. And it will show a um, picture and then down below it will show you the colors that are in that particular picture. 
and if you like that color scheme you can then match up your gel pens or markers or pencils whatever you're coloring with as close as you can to those particular colors in that picture so yeah I use design seeds sometimes and Pinterest I also, <laughs> this may sound funny, but I also do get some inspiration from Maddie's clothes. <laughs> uh, is that funny or what? She's got some of the prettiest colors in her shirts sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, I gotta color something with that. <laughs> so I will either write it down and then the next design I do, I, you know, try to pull out those colors. Or, because I want to remember specifically what those colors were, and I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to coloring with those colors, I will take a picture of her and her shirt. <laughs> and then I have that to refer back to when I want to pick out that color scheme. <laughs> but you know, the same is true with, you know, sometimes you'll see some upholstery that's really pretty or some design in a rug or, you know, anything, something out in nature or, you know, flowers. You just have to kind of train your eye more to not just look at the object as a whole, but to pick out the specific colors in it. And you'd be surprised the number of colors that are sometimes in that particular object that we typically don't see. We just see it as a whole. And our eye or our brain or a combination of the two doesn't really pick out the specific colors unless you're really looking for them. So yeah, if you look at a flower bed um, and notice all the colors in that, or yeah, I, I do look at clothing. <laughs> I have done that a number of times, especially like I said with Maddie's pretty pretty shirt she's, she has on. So, yeah, there are a few places where I get some color combinations, and I do have my favorites that I do fall back on a lot. The yellow, orange, red, the yellow, green, blue, the pink, purple, yellow. I, I use yellow a lot as my highlight color, but any lighter color, and I talked about this in a previous video on how I color a mandala. I always pick a lighter color to use kind of, yeah, like a, a highlighting color a color that I can color in backgrounds with or you can go the opposite and color the background in real dark especially if the colors that you're using in the rest of the mandala are all bright colors so it all depends how you want that mandala to look okay so there let's get over here there is how the centerpiece is looking. Now we're at a half an hour already. My gosh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, mum, 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 let's see. Why don't we go in with the green and we will fill these in. Oh, I can hear Bob is home. So, I may end up pausing this video. 
and see how his day went. And then I will come back and I don't know if I'll finish this because it looks like this is going to take me longer than I thought. I thought I picked out a real simple one. <laughs> Although I did show the gel pens in the beginning, so that took up a little bit of time. But okay. And then let's go around. I want to pick a color that I haven't used as much. And I'm going to go around with the pink. And then around that, I think what we will do, can't use the purple. Maybe we'll, I'll, I'll have to see what it looks like once I get this pink down. That's what happens a lot of times for me is I don't decide ahead of time. Once I get one section in, then it kind of speaks to me what should go next. So I'm not real sure what is going to look most cohesive once I get this pink in. So we'll see. This is probably going to be a longer color and chat again like my last one ended up being oh my heavens I think that one was close to three hours wasn't it that was a long one okay apologize if I am making anybody dizzy by turning the book around when I color mandalas especially, but well, designs too, I have to have the book, when I am coloring it with gel pens, I have to have the book in the direction that I need it in order to color smoothly. So, let's go back and finish this. Oh, let's get back over here. And I am going to finish up this pink part. We will decide what we want to do with the next ring. And then I'm going to pause for a little bit. And I will be back. So, okay, that is the green or the pink part. So... What would look great for the outside? Don't really want to do the blue or the purple, so I think the outer ring will be green. But, like I said, I am going to pause for now, and I will be back in a little bit. See you later. Okay, I am back. I have a Misty up here who has decided to join us. And so, Misty, you're going to watch me color. Okay, so let's go. We decided on the green. So we will go around the circle with the green. Misty is watching my pen move. Don't, don't brush against my stand here. You'll make them shake. Okay, you can rub up against the light. <laughs> Stop it. So, we... Our weather guys were right on the money when they said mid-afternoon that the snow was going to be starting. Because, yes, it is 3 o'clock and now the snow has started. And that is why I took my shower this morning and went into town 
right away this morning and after my first video that I already have out on YouTube about the app that I use to keep track of my coloring book collection. Misty, I'm going to hit you with my book. And, uh, yeah, so I recorded that this morning and then decided I was going to take my shower and get into town and run my errands before the snow hit yet again. Although we're only supposed to get like two to three inches out of this one, so nothing too bad, just enough to make it a little slippery, so I thought I would go on the side of caution and go into town before the snow even started. And I went to Walmart for groceries. <laughs> I get in there, they didn't have that many carts left. And the carts that they did have were totally covered in snow and ice. The handles that you hang on to were coated in ice. And the guy that says, welcome to Walmart, <laughs> said that, because um, I took a towel and I was trying to wipe off the handle, thinking maybe it was wet, but no, the whole cart, the handle, everything was just coated in ice, so I couldn't get it off, and he came over and tried to help me chip it off the handle, <laughs> and he said, yeah, they were running completely out of carts, so they hauled out the ones that were buried in the snow from the last snowstorm. <laughs> and yeah, they were just covered in ice. And he says, only in Wisconsin. I'm like, yeah. Or a northern state, anyhow. So that was kind of funny. If you think your hands were cold from outside, you should try pushing a cart around in Walmart that is encased in ice. And it's actually kind of dangerous because as that cart warmed up when I was shopping, it was dripping all over the place. And yeah, my hands were froze just pushing that cart. Oh, they I've never ever had that happen to me in Walmart before. Good heavens. So yeah, that was kind of funny. And then some of my groceries, especially those that were in boxes, got a little wet. The boxes themselves and as I was putting groceries on the, um, not the belt line, the conveyor belt, whatever you want to call it, left water all over on there. So then she had to get some paper towel and wipe everything up. And I said something to the effect of, yeah, all the carts that were left had ice all over them and she's like oh she goes I thought it was snowing already I said no not yet matter of fact the sun was shining this morning when I recorded my first video I had to actually close the patio door blinds here because it was shining on my desk but it is no longer sunny out. Now the patio door blinds are open. And it is mid-afternoon, so with it being so cloudy and overcast out now, I can imagine it's probably gonna get dark sooner because it's so gloomy. But our days are getting longer. 
not having to turn on the lights quite so early. Forgot what they say, how many minutes of daylight we are gaining per day now. It's like, yes. Save on the electricity bill. <laughs> Plus it's just nice, you know, to have the light outside longer. Okay, how are we looking? A lot of green in there, isn't there? So we're going to try to get some of the other colors in here more. So, what should we make these little things? I think purple is so close. We're going to go with, I think we'll go with the blue and the pink. So, we will... What do we want to put on the inside? I think we'll put the pink on the inside, blue on the outside. No, I don't think we'll do that because I think I'll put purple in here then. So we'll want to go dark, light, dark. So we will, maybe I'll do the blue first then. See how I, <laughs> I sit and analyze everything. That's my thought process. <laughs> Just like my when I do designs, color in designs, it takes me a while to figure out how I want the design itself to look. But then, because it's typically a repeating pattern, once you have it figured out, then you just repeat that design for the rest of the pattern. So, yeah. That's kind of the exciting part of coloring a design is figuring out what colors you want where and what's going to look nice. And And again, I am one that does not like to put the same color next to each other. So I avoid that at all costs. Sometimes you can't help it. But for the most part, <laughs> especially once you start using more colors, like this one has four in. But, you know, sometimes if you use more than four, you typically can get away with, you know, not having two colors next to each other. So we will just finish coloring in these little bits. Anybody have any plans for the weekend? Like I said, I'm recording this on Friday, but I don't think I'll be having it up tonight anymore. I did publish a that other video on that app earlier today, so I think I will first be getting this one out tomorrow or Sunday. After this particular video, I don't know if I'll be able to record it anymore tonight. Um, so probably tomorrow I want to continue on with the diamond painting series. So I have part one out there. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and look in my videos. I do have playlists out there that... Uh, I am trying to organize all of my videos into, and there is a playlist called Diamond Paintings, or Diamond Painting. And so each one of these parts, hopefully I'll remember, but uh, 
I will be putting in that playlist. And then any future diamond painting videos I do, if I do a diamond paint in chat, <laughs> I will also put in that playlist. I do have some how-to videos out there, and I have quite a few playlists. Color and chats, giveaways. I've tried to organize them all. And I think up until this morning's, I think I got them all into playlists now. Oh, I can hear Judge Judy's on. If any of you watch Judge Judy? I get such a kick out of her. There is no way that I would want to go in front of Judge Judy. Oh, she would just intimidate the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, my. That woman scares me. But that is why she has had her own show for how many years now? But she's hilarious to watch. I think I would definitely want to settle <laughs> the lawsuit that I was involved in, whether I was the plaintiff or the defendant, before going in front of her. Ooh. She is a get-down-to-business type of gal, ain't she? And it's always on uh, at 3 o'clock. So, typically, it's kind of hard for us to hear it all because, yeah, I have many. But... Yeah, try to hear some of it. And we're just going around the circle. Maybe I should have went with a little bit darker green rather than this bright spring green, but... Oh well, it will look fine. So I do anticipate coloring a lot of mandalas this month with it being Mandala Mania 2019 because I love mandalas. I will be coloring some with gel pen like this, especially now that I have these. <laughs> but I will also be coloring some with marker. Now today I am supposed to, I was hoping I'd have them by now, but UPS has not been here yet my 168 set of Le Moshe alcohol markers. And so that is another video that I want to get recorded either tonight or tomorrow. Now, depending on when UPS delivers them, they can sometimes be quite late. Even though they're out for delivery at, say, 6, 7 in the morning, there are times I don't get my delivery until, you know, 5, 6 o'clock at night. And we don't have any Amazon trucks around here. I've heard Ann mention something about they have an actual Amazon truck delivery truck down there. I have never heard of that. <laughs> Do any of you guys have an, Am an actual Amazon delivery truck delivered by you? 
I didn't know there was such a thing. Must be only in the bigger areas. I mean, I imagine like New York and places like that may have them. We're just in itty bitty Wisconsin, so. And I'm just in itty bitty town. <laughs> So even if they have them in Wisconsin, it probably would only be down like by Milwaukee or the bigger cities. Not up here. Maybe eventually they will have more. Just like they're talking about, you know, having drone deliveries and... Then they have those, they're talking about these little robots that are going to be delivering. Or you can, and then you can also have, what, how did that one work? I seen a, I think it was on the news. You can have them deliver to um, a box that you have outside your house that is locked and only can be accessed via a code or something like that and you actually give this code or however it works to this little robot that delivers and it can open that box and put your delivery in it so that your package cannot be stolen off your porch. I'm sure we've all seen those videos where it shows these brazen people going up onto people's porches and stealing their packages. Especially at Christmas time, I guess they had a huge problem with packages being stolen. That is just unreal to me. Okay, what are we going to do in here? They remind me of mermaid scales or fish scales, huh? So, how about if we make them Let's see, maybe we'll do a blue row and a green row and a blue row. Why don't we do, yeah, why don't we do blues and greens? So yeah, I think I'll do blues and then greens, blues, greens, blues, okay. And then we'll probably go around with pink and get some more pink in here. There's a lot of green in here already. Let's see. Maybe I'll change my mind on that. Okay. Hmm. Or... Do I want to do blue, pink, blue, pink, and then put purple around? Maybe we'll do that. There's quite a bit of green in it already, so maybe we'll go that way. I always try to even out my colors a little bit so it's not so, I don't know, lopsided. <laughs> So we will go this route. And we'll go up here and do the pinks while we have it in our hand. So again, you can see how smoothly these color, oh, they are just awesome. So yeah, I will link them down below and I'll link this book down below like I usually do in all of my videos. But 
Yeah, I cannot wait until I get those markers. I am so curious to see if they are as good as what I hear they are. I have heard all good reviews about the Limoche. I think that's how it's pronounced anyhow. I don't know if that's French. It kind of sounds French, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that pink and blue. So we will see how long this is going to take. I was going to make some homemade um, ham and cheese omelets for Bob and I tonight for supper because I still have some of that ham to use up. If you've seen my video from last week and I made a big batch of homemade um, split pea and ham soup in the crock pot and it turned out so good. But because we used up the spiral ham that Bob got from work at Christmas time, there is some ham left. So I said, why don't I make some ham and cheese omelet? But now we may. He, he got a craving for Culver's. <laughs> so we may go out to Culver's. And then this weekend, he is a big chili lover. So I make chili quite often for him. And it is supposed to get extremely cold by Sunday night. We are going to break yet some more records for cold. Ugh. We are all just so sick of snow and cold and winter in general. I said, sure, why not? Might as well break a record for breaking records, <laughs> right? <laughs> Might as well. And you notice how this one had more layers to it than this one? So it ended up with a pink tip instead of a blue tip. They are not symmetrical. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so I got to kind of watch my hand here. Matter of fact, maybe we will go on this side so that I do not smear any of the gel pen ink. So yeah, that is one thing you do have to take into consideration when you are coloring with gel pens. I always work from top to bottom, and because I am right-handed, I always work from left to right but sometimes that just isn't possible because of how the design is and what color you are coloring with so there are times where you just have to be careful or like what I just did you turn the book around and you color from the other direction <laughs> so all depends on what you are doing Hello, Misty, are you back? I had a, a comment from a subscriber. <laughs> I got a kick out of this one. It made me giggle. Where it was on my first diamond painting video. And she was saying, you know, thank you for the very informative video and I believe she was one that was saying she was just starting diamond painting and whatnot, so she really liked watching it. And then at the end she goes, 
but Misty scared the heck out of me or something like that, she said. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, she scared the heck out of me too. If you haven't seen that video at the very, well, I don't know how close to the end it was, but at one point during the video, I had a whole bunch of things up on my desk and on my side desk too, because my desk is in the shape of an L. It is a large office desk. And so I have the printers over to the right of me on that part of the L of the desk. And so I had my storage trays and a bunch of stuff sitting over there and Misty decided she wanted to jump up on the desk and come by me. Only I had a bunch of stuff over there and it went crashing down. And the trays that I was going to be showing all ended up on that side of my desk where I couldn't get at them while I was recording. So yeah, it made a bunch of noise and oh boy, oh boy. So I couldn't show those particular trays because I couldn't get at them. I have them now. So when I do my next part of the diamond painting series, I will go ahead and show those trays that I couldn't show. But yeah, she was being a stinker. which she can be. I call her my sassy pants because she can be a stinker. She will run after the other two all the time and she has to show them who's boss. Even though midnight, my male cat, has been here the longest, she does not let that stand in her way at all. So she will put him in his place too. So the other two cats are afraid of Misty. When I go to the bathroom, of course, my cats want to come in there with me as all pets have a habit of doing because you cannot go anywhere in your house by yourself if you have, whoa, excuse me, lost my pen. If you have a pet, you cannot go anywhere in the house and be by yourself. And so, if Misty has followed me into the bathroom, <laughs> um, and Callie or Midnight want to come in by me, first thing they do is they look to see if Misty's in there, and if she is, they hightail it the other way. <laughs> If she's not in there, Kelly and Midnight get along great, so they will both come in by me then. But yeah, then if Misty comes around, yeah, those two will hightail it back out. <laughs> she's such a meanie, and Kelly is her sister. They're both calico cats. Misty is a muted calico, and I've been told Michelle or any of you that that know a lot about cats I was told that a muted calico is kind of rare she does not have bright colors like a typical calico that has you know your brighter oranges and your blacks and you know things like that she is more of a gray and a very, what do you want to say, a dull orange rather than a bright orange that you see on calicos typically, and then a lot of white. Callie does not have much white on her. She has more color, whereas Misty has a lot of white and then gray and then this Kind of a muted orange and if you've seen some of my previous videos um, 
one of the videos. I can't remember which one it is now, but it did. Oh, I think it was the tour of my recording area and my storage areas. And when I came back in here from the dining room after showing you where I keep all of my coloring books and all of my supplies, I came back in here and the sun was shining while I was recording. And yes, all three cats were laying on the floor in here, so I showed all three of them. So, yeah. You can see in that video what all three of the kitties look like. They were all sunbathing. And I did have a comment from a couple of you subscribers that you wanted to see Bella too. Because you'll hear me talk about her periodically if she gets on a barking spasm depending on if anybody's walking outside or not. And I will sometimes have to pause the video because she gets in a barking fit. And so, yeah, a few of you wanted to see what Bella looked like. She is a toy Pomeranian Yorkie, but she looks much more terror-ish. Terror Terrier-ish. Gosh, that's a tongue twister. She looks more like a terrier. Let's put it that way. More like a Yorkie than Pomeranian. She, now that she's fluffing out with longer hair because she needs a haircut, you can see some of the palm in her. She's got a much thicker furrier coat than a typical Yorkie would have. And so yeah, the palm is coming out a little bit. I'm gonna get a drink here. Okay. So let's get in some of this blue. But, oh, back to Bella. Um, I recorded a segment um, showing my diamond painting area where I diamond paint in the living room. It's at a large drafting table that we picked up for five bucks, or 15, sorry, <laughs> 15 bucks off of Craigslist and it's like brand new. It was hardly used. So, I have that in the corner of my living room, and that is where I diamond paint. So, I just took my phone and I recorded that area over there and showed my large diamond painting that I am working on. I only have one row left to do down in the bottom. It is a very large waterfall. And I want to, <coughs> excuse me, put that in my living room when it is completed. So that is why that is the only diamond painting I will be having professionally framed. But while I was recording that area, Bella was laying so cute on the back of the couch so, I thought I would show you guys what Bella looked like. And I think I will be inserting that clip then in the next part. I think it will be three parts long in my little diamond painting mini-series. So, in the next part, which will be part two... I think I will be inserting that clip that shows my diamond painting area and shows little Bella. She is a little cutie pie, but oh, bark, 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 bark. And I guess that's pretty much par for the course for small dogs, isn't it? 
seems the smaller they are, the more they bark and the higher pitch their bark is, so it goes right through you. I don't mind if she just, you know, sometimes she'll just woof. That doesn't bother me. If she gets yelled at for barking and stuff, yeah, then she'll just woof, woof. That doesn't bug me. It's that loud, high-pitched barking. Oh, yes. Kind of like nails on a chalkboard. Just kind of goes through ya. Ah, just thought of it again. Darn it. I know I mentioned this in a different video. I need a clock here at my desk so that I can see what time it is. And I had looked on Walmart's website. And at my store, they have these, you know, really cheapy clocks for under five bucks. And that's really all I need here by my desk. I don't need anything fancy. I just want a small wall clock to hang on the wall here. And I forgot it last time. And now I forgot to get it this time. Uh, Because I'm thinking maybe by 4 o'clock I am going to pause this video again. Paused for you. <laughs> Anyhow. And then I will pick up on finishing this then when we get back from supper. If he does still want to go to Culver's. And so we can... Go out to eat, and then I will come back and finish this. It's just, I'm not sure, like I said, depending on the lighting, when you color with glitter gel pens, again, depending on where your light is coming from, sometimes it's hard to color with them. And especially when I'm recording, it may be difficult for you guys to see. So I'm going to just have to kind of play with the... Okay, Lisa, where are you? Wrong way. Um, kind of play with it and see what it looks like. I can possibly move my desk light in a different area too so that it wouldn't shine so much and shine on the camera when I color. So we will see. I would like to finish this video tonight though so then I can get it in the editor and saved and rendered and uploaded and all that takes quite a few hours. So I would like to work on that part of it tonight. And then tomorrow I could work on my diamond painting videos. And, again, hopefully I should be getting those Limoche markers today. So I am going to be doing a swatching video of that. I had asked you guys to leave a comment whether I should swatch them on my own and just show them to you then and talk about, you know, what I think of the markers, or if you would like to see a swatching out of all the markers. And the consensus basically is that you would like to see them swatched out. And I know I enjoy swatching videos. So that is what I will do. So that is another video I want to make. I have a lot of videos on my to-do list. So, now should we put purple around or should we put the green around? I think we will do the green. I think the purple would blend into the blue a little bit too much. So, let's go ahead and do the green. Kind of want a contrasting color out here anyhow. 
and the green will stick out. Well, Judge Judy's on yet, so I know it's not four. <laughs> Must be getting close though, because I think it was close to three when Bob got here, and that was a little while ago, so when I had paused the video the first time. So maybe we will get around the mandala with this green, and then I will again pause the video and pick it up later and finish this thing off. Yeah, it's getting drearier and drearier out there. Snow's coming down a little heavier. I'm just glad we're not supposed to get much out of this. I had taken Bella out last night, as I've mentioned in the past. I am a night owl. So I am typically up till uh, 12, 1230. Usually I try to get to bed before 1, anyhow. Usually before 1230. And I take Bella out, and it's close to midnight. And they take her out to go potty before we go to bed. And all of a sudden I hear this beep, 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 beep. I'm like, what the heck? You know, like something was backing up a piece of, you know, equipment. And I look down the street and here <laughs> is big snow removal vehicles. Well, one. I could see the one. I could tell that there was a, a truck, a dump truck there, too. Here they were doing snow removal up by the church. Well, kind of onto, I forgot to tell Bob about this, going kind of across our street. And they were doing snow removal at, like, midnight at night. <laughs> I suppose they had to do some of the snow removal at night when people weren't out and about. So it wasn't a hazard to the vehicles driving, but it it just looks so bizarre to see these people out at midnight doing snow removal. But yeah, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Oh yeah, it's four o'clock. Ellen DeGeneres just came on. <laughs> it's funny how a person knows what's on TV at what time, right? Although I can never remember what is on Monday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday night. I am many times at night, anyhow, watching and catching up with my YouTube videos on the channels that I watch. I typically watch YouTube then at night to catch up on things that were posted during the day for the channels that I do subscribe to. I may watch some in the morning as I am coloring because Sometimes I will color in the morning, and then I like to, as I'm coloring, I like watching YouTube or listening, I should say, especially if there is a color and chat up. Then I like to pull that up and listen to the color and chat as I color. It's my favorite thing to do. So, yeah, but the TV typically is on, even if I'm not watching it. I just, I don't like the silence. So, yeah, it's, it's usually on all day. 
and then in the evening and the evening programs I don't watch um, ABC we, we don't watch a whole lot it's a lot of CBS shows that we seem to gravitate towards and I cannot remember usually I know Thursday nights are good nights because <laughs> Big Bang my absolute favorite show is on and then Young Sheldon and then Mom and I like all of those shows I can't remember I think it's one of the newer shows that's on after Mom. Is it Fam? Something like that. I haven't gotten too much into that show yet. But I love Big Bang. And I am so very sad that this is their last season. I think there's maybe only like a dozen shows left or something. I can understand why it's their last season. I mean, the storyline has kind of done its course. I mean, they're all married and some have kids. And now even Raj is getting married. For those of you who do watch Big Bang, didn't think that would ever happen because there for a number of seasons, he couldn't even talk two women without having alcohol. It was kind of funny. And then he eventually got over that and could talk to women. And, but it's like he was destined to be a bachelor when all the other ones were getting married. But now he is even getting married. So yeah, the, you know, Penny and Leonard are married and so, yeah, they're all getting married. And, yeah, I guess the storyline has just kind of run its course. But it is still so funny after how many seasons that that show has been on. I still love it. That's another show that when it started out, I didn't really care for it. Sorry, I'm twisting you around. I don't mean to make you dizzy. <laughs> um, yeah, I did not care. It. I guess it always takes me a while to get into a, a show because you don't know the characters. You don't know kind of what the show is all about yet, I guess. I'm not sure. So, yeah, the first few shows that I've seen of Big Bang how many years ago, I did not think I was going to like that show at all. It was just kind of a strange premise to the show. You know, it was kind of different. <laughs> you know, you get these geniuses together. And, but it, it started growing on me. I started really liking it. And then I absolutely fell in love with it. And... It became my number one comedy show to watch. And yeah, now, how many years later? I don't even know how, how many seasons, how many years they've been on. I can't remember what they... Whoops, let's come down this way. I can't remember how many seasons they've been on. I know it's a lot. And, you know, when you look... Now, once that show got popular, what those actors got paid per episode was just unreal. I think the two most popular characters on there, and hence why I think they actually get paid the most per episode, were Sheldon and Penny. Because Kaylee... Kuko, is that how you pronounce her last name? Kwaku, Kuko, no, I think it's Kuko. And Jim Parsons, who plays Sheldon. Um, if I remember right, if I read right, I think had the highest salaries on that show. 
and yeah, they are both hilarious. That show wouldn't be the same show without Penny, nor Sheldon. Well, you know, not without any of them. They all make the show, I guess. Which is, I guess, the you know, that's true of, of any show, you know, especially a sitcom when they're all big players in the show. I am closing up all my pens. I am going to bring you back out, hopefully. Come on. Work for me. Work with me. Work with me. There we go. Okay, we are back out. Um, so this is what it looks like so far. We only have the outside of the design to do, but I am going to again pause it at this point and we will pick it up a little bit later, only a few seconds for you, a little while later for me. So I will talk to you all a little bit later and we will finish this off with these new chromatic glitter gel pens. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Well, hello, I am back. Got back from eating at Culver's and I have a full tummy. <laughs> I had a fish fry. So yeah. That was really nummy. Okay. Now, what were we doing on here? Hmm. Okay. Let's get into these small areas. And I'm going to zoom you back in. Okay. So, yeah. What are we going to do in here? Let's Go. We don't have much purple, so I think I'm going to do the bigger area purple. So maybe we will do the blue, pink, purple. I don't like to put the blue and the purple together because they're so similar. So let's put the blue in here. And then, so I'm not flipping you guys around constantly, I'm going to do all three colors in each area. So we will then do the pink. And then we will do the purple. And I thought this was really a goofy color combination, but the more I am coloring it, the more I like it. So no matter how goofy you think your colors look, by the time you get done, it kind of grows on you. Especially for a mandala or a design where there are no set rules. Of course, there's really no set rules for any picture, is there? <laughs> You can make trees purple, you can make elephants pink, you can do whatever you want. Which is what is so nice about coloring, right? You can do it realistic, you can do it fantasy, you can do sometimes like what I do where my grandson picks out the colors for me and they definitely do not go with the particular picture he has picked out for me. So then, yeah, then you just do it in fantasy, unrealistic colors. Unless it's a design he's picked out for me, in which case <laughs> it can be any color, right? any colors you want and again I think that's why I like glitter gel pens so much because the colors are just so pretty and vibrant and 
and glitter. Gel pins are so sparkly. It is now evening. I don't know if you can, I got the lights on. Yeah, you can see the shimmer now. I have my desk lamps on. So I hope it's not shining too bad where you can't see. When I look at it in the iPad, it doesn't look too bad, so. Don't have too much left to go on this picture. I hope you all are enjoying this color and chat. My first mandala for Mandala Mania 2019. Like I said, I can foresee me coloring a lot of mandalas throughout this month, doing a bunch of color and chats. There are many things, however, on my wish list. Wish list? No, not my wish list. Well, yeah, there's a lot of things on my wish list on Amazon. <laughs> that list keeps growing and growing. No matter what a person gets, it's like that wish list never seems to go down, does it? No, I meant there are many things on my video to-do list. And first and foremost is getting the other couple of diamond painting videos done. And then I do want to show another color tuber and a coloring system that she has come up with for colored pencils. It is just, it's, well, for initially it was for just Prismacolor. Then she expanded it to Polychromos and now she is adding in Holbein's and uh, Derwent. I'm not sure which Derwent. If it's going to be the artist pencils or because there's so many Derwents. I have the Color Soft, so it'd be nice if they did Color Soft, but um, I think like the artist pencils and some of the others are probably more popular than the Color Soft, so she will probably be doing the one that is the most popular. So I'm not sure, but you purchase these workbooks off of Etsy. Now they used to be just black and white. She has colorized the versions and I'm not gonna go into it all in this color and chat, but just suffice it to say, it's pretty, pretty cool. So I am going to be making a video showing all of that as soon as I get my colorized versions of the workbooks that I purchased on Etsy. Because when we purchased it, all that was available were the black and whites. And now that she came out with a color version, we get upgraded to the color version for nothing. So that's kind of nice. So yeah, that is a, another video that should be upcoming shortly. And then there are just a bunch of other, I want to do a little, again, little mini series. I want to show all of my coloring supplies. I'll do one like on pencils, one on markers, one on miscellaneous, or depending on how long they run, I may just run everything into one. I don't know yet. Again, I, I guess it's going to depend how long it takes me to just go through the pencils. I think I would like to split them out into pencils, markers, and then 
probably just miscellaneous and that would include my gel pens and everything pan pastels and I'm not going to go through absolutely every supply that I own like all the miscellaneous you know things that I have in the drawers because yeah we would be here till the cows come home so yeah I'm not going through all of that but just you know pan pastels and my stickles and you know those types of things for the miscellaneous supplies I don't know if that will include like sharpeners that I use, blenders, um, you know, things like that. You gotta think about it yet. I guess it depends what I can all fit on my desk. No. <laughs> my desk is pretty big, so I don't know. Of course, by the time I haul all of my pencils over here and markers and that will take up a lot of room so that is on the to-do list also but it's really nice <laughs> having a video to-do list because that means I'm not running out of ideas yet for you guys I am going to be getting into my pan pastels. That is another request that I did have from a subscriber. She just received the entire set of pan pastels and was wondering if I could, you know, color with them. And I said, uh, yeah, that will go on my to-do list. However, <laughs> I have not colored with my pan pastels up to this point. I have only used them for backgrounds and with stencils and whatnot. But now that I have also completed my set just very recently of pan pastels, I do want to start coloring with them and using them to their full potential. Especially seeing as how expensive they are. So, okay, now, what should we do up here? <laughs> we got one, two, three different colors to go in up here. So, I think we'll do, uh, let's do pink here, green here, blue there. How does that sound? So, we will do, what did I say? Pink, pink, green, blue. Okay. I think that's what I said, huh? So, yes, we went to Culver's, had a fish fry. I love their french fries. Mm. What I liked the most at Culver's was when they used to have a ham and cheese sandwich, a grilled ham and cheese. It was so good, and I was so disappointed when they discontinued it. So, I had the fish tonight. I do like their Rubens, too, but it seems like that's what I always could get when I go there. So I thought, well, let's have a fish fry. And I, their fish fries are very good. They're a little expensive, but they're very good. But I only ate one piece of fish and probably not even half of my french fries. A couple bites of coleslaw and I was stuck. Because tummy is quite a bit smaller now since, you know, I had my uh, gastric bypass. How many years ago now? Let's see, almost seven, about six and a half years ago. So, yeah, definitely cannot eat as much. And now since Bob had his surgery, he usually, you know, he used to have a big appetite. Never brought food home. <laughs> well, of course, now he cannot eat as much either. So we both end up bringing 
doggy bags back home and we have lunch the next day. So it works out pretty good actually. And then tomorrow for supper, I will make our ham and cheese omelets that I was talking about. And Sunday, I will make him his chili. I hope nobody is watching this before supper, before lunch, and I'm making you hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. I'll probably be hungry again in another few hours anyhow. It seems, you know, even though I can only eat such a little bit at a time, well, yeah, then you're hungry again in a few hours, so... Now for Bob, that's a good thing because the more calories that guy can get in, the better. Me, not so much. I had put on a few pounds and it was about 20, 20 pounds, but now I lost over 10 of them, so. And that is purely giving up this candy that I was addicted to. They're called caramel bits and they're made by Kraft. And it's just like their, their wrapped caramels. The bag looks identical. I'm gonna switch back around this way. The, um, yeah, the bags look identical. Um, where am I at here? To the... Okay, I'm way off base. There we go. To the caramels that are wrapped. You know, where each one's wrapped individual. Except for these are little round... Um, bits of caramel. They're not sticky. They're not all wrapped individually. And they are in the baking aisle. They are used in baking. So like if you want to make, you know, caramel brownies or, you know, things like that where you would bake with them. That is what they are intended for. However, <laughs> Lisa discovered these and I am, caramel has to be my number one favorite candy. And I try not to eat too much candy. For obvious reasons but I tell you these things were just so addicting and I just could not get myself off of them and you know once that sweet tooth has been satisfied it likes it it always keeps wanting more and so I got so used to having those on a daily basis and yeah I started gaining weight imagine that so, finally, I decided after Christmas, I had to go cold turkey. And I had to no longer, I had to force myself to no longer pick up those caramel bits in the store. And so, yeah, it's been a while since I bought them. And between that and watching my portion size and trying not to eat too much before bed has kind of all made a difference. So yeah, I never, when I made a goal before I had my surgery, I made a goal of 150. I wanted to get down to 150 pounds. And I never quite made it. My other goal was a size 8. That I made. And I got down to 152. I was 2 pounds away from my ultimate goal. And do you think I could get any lower than that? Nope. 
and my body was not happy down at that weight either. And the average weight that you gain back, because you always gain back some after you hit your all-time low. So my all-time low was 152. You typically gain back, the average is 11%. Well, I lost a total of, what was it, 116 pounds. So, I should have gained about 12 pounds back, sort of, kind of, 12 to 13. That's, you know, would be kind of the, the average. Well, Lisa gained a little more than that over the past few years. But all in all, I have been doing pretty good. So, and now with losing this 10 pounds, it makes me feel better. I'm still under 200 anyhow, so. And now I am quite a ways back under 200, so. That makes me happy. Especially where it's winter and you really can't get out to do much physical activity. I don't get to the gym anymore now that I babysit. And yes, I know I'm using that as an excuse. I could go right away in the morning. I could go after she is picked up, and if I truly, truly wanted to go, that is very true. But <laughs> I am not a morning person. I think I have mentioned that a thousand times or more. And I am an evening person, but I'll tell you, by the time... Maddie and Jaden get picked up. I do not feel like switching into gym clothes, going out in this cold, or even in summertime, you know, just going to the gym at that time of night. So I use that as my excuse, I guess, to not go to the gym. It's been a couple years now since I have worked out at the gym. And yeah, I used to work out for a good hour and a half a day. I mean, I, I really, I really worked it good while I was there. And it, you know, and you felt so good once you got back out of there. Oh, I'd always be on an exercise high. And so, yeah, I mean, you, you do. You feel so good when you exercise. You get them endorphins going. And so I do miss it. And someday I may get back there. <laughs> someday. Now with Heather being pregnant again, though, I don't know when. And then we were going to do blue on the outside. So, yeah, with her having another baby, it's kind of putting a damper in my style. How dare she, huh? <laughs> oh, what a grandma. So, yes, what is everybody doing this fine Friday night? Of course, when you guys see it, It'll be Saturday or Sunday. No, probably Saturday. I believe I'm putting this one up tomorrow to help kick off Mandela Mania 2019. I just quick glanced on my phone when we got back from eating and I seen that there were a couple of Mandela Mania videos out there already, so... Anne has one out there. Yay! I so look forward to seeing her videos, her color and chats, so I know that I'll have something to watch. I believe, was it Donna, maybe, who had one out there, too? And maybe Michelle? I'm not sure. I didn't see if Samantha had one out there. Um, but 
So I'll have some color and chats to listen to tonight when I am done with this video and getting it edited and all that fun stuff that takes a few hours. I will have a color and chat or a number of color and chats to listen to while I color in my comfy chair. And I will be busy making out a list of things that I want to cover in the diamond painting videos that I want to do tomorrow. We do also, however, have that swatching video to make of the Limoche markers. And it is, gosh, what time is it now? It's after 6. 6.30, and UPS still has not been here. I still do not have my markers. I'm getting a little upset. I thought for sure they would come while we were in town, but no cigar. So I don't know where they are. I realize the roads were getting kind of slick again, and it usually takes a while for UPS to get out here once it says it's out for delivery. Because it's been out for delivery since like 8 this morning. So, for, you know, 10 and a half hours or so, it's been out for delivery. And UPS delivers here pretty late anyhow, typically. Sometimes they're here in the morning, so it all depends upon, I guess, the route that they're given and, you know, how busy, how many deliveries they have to make for that day. But many times they're here late, usually not this late, though. And the roads are getting a little slippery, though. As I had said, we're getting snow again. And yeah, they're getting a little greasy. Matter of fact, we've seen an almost accident on the way home where a car was going around a corner and slid out and was lost contraction. I almost said lost contraction. <laughs> a little bit of a difference there. Lost traction and almost slid into a truck. What's ironic is the truck is a UMS truck, which is United Mailing Service. And that is the company that my daughter Heather works for and manages the WASA office. So she would have had to have taken care of getting that truck fixed. I thought that was ironic. It wasn't the truck's fault, though. The car lost control and almost slid into him, so thank God. I mean, it only had to have been a few feet away from the front end of that truck, though. He probably was seeing this car coming at him. There was nothing he could do about it. And we were on this bridge on top of it, an overpass. Ugh. That was something else. We didn't have too much of a problem getting home. It was just kind of, you know, that fine snow that gets real greasy. We call it greasy, but it gets real slippery. And yeah, so at least they weren't in an accident and we weren't in an accident or nothing like that. We got back home in one piece with our tummies. Then, as we were leaving, I seen on the sign, you know, they always have the flavor of the day at Culver's. You know what the flavor of today was? It was raspberry cheesecake. <laughs> Does that not sound good? See, now I'm back to food again. Raspberry cheesecake. And before I had my... Uh, gastric bypass, my favorite thing is going to Culver's 
getting my meal and having a raspberry sundae for dessert. Oh, I love their custard and the raspberries that they put on there are just scrumptious. I have not now had a raspberry sundae in years. I cannot finish my meal, much less have dessert. When I seen it was raspberry cheesecake for the flavor of the day, we were ready almost out to the exit. I mean, we were in the car driving on the street, and he says, well, we can go back and get some. He said, no, honey. Yeah, I said, okay. <laughs> but it sure did sound good at the time. Bring it home, stick it in the freezer till we can eat it. <laughs> We've done that with desserts before. If we ate at a restaurant and we really had a craving for like cherry pie or something, take the dessert to go, <laughs> then get home, let your tummy settle for a few hours and then have dessert. <laughs> Or occasionally, it would be there the next day yet. Have it the next day. So, yeah. Any big plans that any of you guys have for the weekend? Other than my YouTube videos. <laughs> And hopefully I can get to doing some diamond painting this weekend, finally. Work on my big waterfall project. That is about all of my plans, other than, you know, your typical house cleaning and laundry and all that good adulting stuff that we have to do, right? Okay, I'm going to take a quick swig here. <laughs> Okay, that is how our mandala turned out. And even though I thought when we started the colors were a little, mm, I like how it turned out. I do like it. What do you think? So, that is our first picture for Mandala Mania 2019. And I will mark it and... Hopefully, I will keep better track of what I have colored for the month of March. Again, this is from the book uh, Jade Summers, Mandalas for Beginners, Volume 1. I don't know if that means that Jade Summers is going to be coming out with additional volumes of this particular book. Or if, you know, they just have Volume 1 on here for the heck of it. <laughs> I wouldn't think so, but you never know. I think this one came out a while ago, and there still is no volume two, but um, it is called Mandalas for Beginners, but there are some in here that, you know, are a little more detailed, and so, I mean, oh, there's one I colored. Um, you know, the majority of them are relatively easy, but like that one, I would not say that's for a beginner, you know. I would say they're kind of average. Now look at that one. I would say not say that is for a beginner. That looks like a more advanced. <laughs> you know, that one too. But I do like the mandalas in here. And I can see coloring more out of here um, in the month of March. So, anyhow, enough of my jabbering. Now it's another half hour that I spent finishing this. <laughs> Uh, so, with these three parts together, it's probably going to be another long color and chat. Either I'm sorry or you're welcome. I guess it all depends upon if you like these or you don't. Um, so, anyhow, that is it for today. Again, I hope everybody is having a terrific Saturday, I guess, by the time I put this up. And that you are having a good weekend. Until the next time, if you are enjoying this, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell so you know when I put up any new videos. Again, I hope everybody has a terrific day, and as always, happy coloring. <laughs>